सर्वे सुखि सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणी पश्यंत मा कचि दुखभाग भवे ओ शांति 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 नमस्कार my dear brothers and sisters the topic of discussion today is the spiritual dimension of health when i ask people what is it that keeps us healthy the top two answers are diet and regular physical activity and uh, then very often these days comes sleep and uh, i'm very happy to see that uh, also people mention things like uh, absence of stress meditation positive thinking and so on which means that people are now becoming more and more aware of uh, the importance of psychological factors in keeping us healthy but all the same uh, in the heart of hearts somehow there is still a feeling that uh, it is the physical factors that are really important like diet exercise not smoking drinking getting adequate sleep and so on psychological factors yes they are also important wo bhi hai but uh, the main thing is the physical factors that is the feeling that most people still have to show how important the psychological factors are i'll tell you a story this is a story i must have told a zillion times but in case uh, you haven't heard it from me it's about uh, a st- research study that was done on uh, rabbits and uh, the aim of the study was uh, to understand better the relationship between diet and heart disease these rabbits were divided into two groups one group was given the control group was given the usual rabbit diet but the other group the experimental group was uh, given a high fat high cholesterol diet which uh, everybody now knows is associated with heart disease it increases at least the risk for heart disease after some time after the rabbits had been on these two different diets the results were analyzed and it was found that uh, as expected the rabbits which were on the usual rabbit diet didn't get the disease but uh, those who got the high fat high cholesterol diet also seemed to get divided into two subgroups some of them got the disease and some did not then you know they tried to investigate how that happened and they found that this seemed to have some relationship with the uh, the position of the cage in which the rabbit was in the animal house these rabbits were kept in a rack and the rack had many shelves and the rabbits which were on the lower shelves the shelves at the lower level uh, escaped the disease whereas uh, those which were high up they were the ones who as expected got the disease if they were given a high fat high cholesterol diet now what could the position of the cage have to do with getting or not getting the disease so they investigated further and they found that the technician who came to feed the rabbits when she went to the rabbits at the lower level she opened the cage took the rabbit out held it in in her lap cuddled it fondled it and then kept it back in the cage and then served it food so when it came to the rabbits at the higher level she could hardly reach there so what she did was she just opened the cage threw the food in shut the cage and that was it so the rabbits who got a daily dose of love and affection along with the high fat high cholesterol diet could overcome the adverse effects of this unhealthy diet so psychological factors can be that important they can override the effects of uh, some adverse physical factors i'm not saying that we should not try to take a healthy diet and we should not try to f- uh, live as healthy a lifestyle as possible so far as physical factors are concerned but uh, this study shows firstly the importance of psychological factors they are so important that they can overcome sometimes the adverse effects of an unhealthy physical factor like diet 
And why that is important to understand is because uh, when it comes to physical factors, we are all making mistakes. Primarily because of two reasons. One is ignorance. We don't know and very often the world itself does not know what uh, the most healthy lifestyle is. That is, uh, what is the best way to eat? What are the best things to eat? Uh, what is the best exercise? How long? How severe the exercise should be? And so on and so forth. These are subjects which are still topics of ongoing research. Not only we, sometimes the world doesn't know what the best thing to do is when it comes to physical factors. But uh, more important than ignorance are the compulsions of daily life. We all know we should go to bed early, but uh, then you know uh, to maintain social connectivity, uh, we need to spend time at night uh, answering WhatsApp messages, emails, talking to friends on the phone and so on and so forth. And uh, the result is that uh, it gets late in spite of knowing that we should be sleeping early. So that makes psychological factors doubly important. Now you might say, okay, understood. I have now decided to not worry about anything and to be happy all the time. Will it work? It will not because uh, like New Year resolutions, these resolutions, I will not worry about anything, I'll be happy all the time, are very soon forgotten. And uh, that happens because of the very nature of our minds. Temptations. I have not eaten out for the last four months because of the lockdown. I feel like going to my favorite restaurant. Attachments. My mother lives just four kilometers away from here, but I haven't seen her for the last three months. There's so much uncertainty around my child's NEET exam or the board exam. Conflicts. There are so many poor migrant workers who are hungry, starving, and uh, the least I can do is to donate some money for them. But then I am quite comfortable because I have a job. But then in my company, three people have already been laid off and uh, next it might be my turn. So what will happen if I lose a job? So let me better save money instead of giving it away. Not only this type of conflicts, even uh, intellectual conflicts. I believe in Ayurveda. My friend believes in homeopathy. I say I tried allopathy. It didn't work. But then uh, I went to an Ayurvedic physician and it worked like magic. And uh, my friend says, Yes, allopathy didn't work with me too, but then I went to a homeopath and his treatment worked like magic. So all these uh, temptations, attachments, conflicts, do not let the mind be at peace. So what is the way out? The way out is, so the mind needs an anchor, a reference point, a guide, around which it can... Uh, revolve or to which it can refer when faced with any such problem. And why does that happen? That happens because uh, the knowledge of the mind is limited. Our mental consciousness is basically a consciousness of ignorance. And uh, with the very limited knowledge that we have, all these uh, difficulties that the mind faces are quite natural. Ignorance doesn't just mean partial knowledge, it also means distorted knowledge. For example, in that conflict between uh, Ayurveda and homeopathy, the person who is uh, arguing for Ayurveda knows hardly anything about homeopathy. The one who is arguing for homeopathy knows hardly anything about Ayurveda. They are both talking on the basis of one single personal experience and uh, they feel that uh, somehow I am right and the other person is wrong. If both of them study the system with which they do not have personal experience, probably they will become a little more sympathetic towards the other system and uh, then their attitude will not remain so hardened. Then if they study further other systems of medicine, also something about allopathy, naturopathy, Yunani and so on, then uh, they may come to the conclusion that, well, 
no system works in every situation and with everybody and uh, in some situations in some diseases one system may be better than the other and uh, it also applies to individuals no system works equally well with everybody and what seems to matter is the faith that the individual has in a particular system whatever you have faith in that system will work better for you suppose they get still more knowledge then they would realize that no system of medicine really works without uh, the infinite intelligence that is packed in the self healing mechanisms of the body and every system of medicine is actually providing just a helping hand to these mechanisms and that's how the patient recovers and why one system does better than the other is because uh, if the person has faith in a particular system in a particular doctor then the person feels that i will get well and the feeling that i will get well itself provides that helping hand to the self healing mechanisms of the body so you see that as the knowledge of this person expands the conflict between ayurveda and homeopathy disappears that's how when we have total knowledge in fact all contraries tend to dissolve so the mind is always uh, in a state of chaos in a state of confusion in a state of stress because of limited knowledge and one of the most troublesome features of this limited knowledge is uh, the ego sense the feeling that i am a distinct individual completely separate from everybody else and uh, that is at the root of in fact all these difficulties that the mind creates for us and it is this ego sense that is at the root of the type of difficulties that uh, i was trying to talk about a short while ago which uh, are responsible for not letting the mind be at peace i feel like going to eat out as my knowledge base expands i realize that uh, taste is only a fleeting pleasure and overcoming this desire will become a greater source of joy to me than fulfilling it can ever be i haven't seen my mother for four months there's so much uncertainty about the neat exam or the board exam which my child has to take now what is important in all these is my which is again our ego sense i may not have seen a hundred other people for the last four years but doesn't bother me but not seeing my mother bothers me if my child didn't have to take the neat exam or the board exam it wouldn't bother me even if thousands of other children have to take those exams so again it is because my child that it becomes a source of stress for me i might lose a job again it is i that is important what is if i lose a job what will happen to my family again it's the my part that comes in and uh, when it is uh, that conflict between ayurveda and homeopathy i have to prove myself right so again it is that me feeling that creates that conflict and uh, we saw how as knowledge expands the ego tends to either dissolve or stretch itself out and the result is that uh, the difficulty is gone more knowledge helps us see things from a higher plane and from a higher plane things are always much simpler and what is the type of knowledge that we are talking about essentially what we are talking about is uh, knowledge of the deeper truths of existence the knowledge that is inherent in our soul and that is why the soul can act as that reference point as that guide as that anchor that can help the person look at things from a higher plane and uh, that has two types of effects and the importance that we are attaching to ourselves our feelings our attachments our relationships is minuscule in uh, the larger picture and uh, to give you an example there was once a person who was uh, visiting his friend and uh, then boasting about the large number of houses that he had in delhi and he said see i was very wise when the 
land was available very cheap i went on buying it and the result is today i have one house in defense colony one in vasant kunj and one in new friends colony and so on and so forth so then what happened was uh, there was uh, a young son of this host also sitting there and listening to all this uh, boasting that his uh, father's friend was uh, getting into and uh, what this young boy did was to go and bring a map of india and uh, then sh- gave it to his father's friend and said uncle please can you show me your houses on this map and uh, he was taken aback he said well they are all in delhi and delhi is just one dot in this map so how can i show you all those houses but same time he had driven home a point that uh, when we look at uh, many things from uh, a limited point of view their appearance is very different when we look at the larger picture and uh, that's what happens uh, when we look at everything from a larger point of view and uh, we realize that uh, a lot of uh, this conflicts which are there because of uh, this me feeling i me and mine feeling because of this feeling of separation uh, they disappear uh, are desires are conflicts attachments to relationships attachments to possessions they tend to dissolve either in uh, our sense of separation getting dissolved or our own importance getting minimized so it can work both ways either this ego can dissolve into a nothingness or this ego can expand to include everybody the entire universe and let's see how both these things can help you know this example of this map was uh, uh, to drive home the point how when uh, we look at it from a larger picture we find that uh, our own importance can get reduced to nothing and that is what can dissolve this ego sense to give you another example along the same lines suppose uh, a person keeps some water outside his house in the summers so that the birds can come and drink and uh, the birds are very good at locating such sources of water and uh, true enough a f- few birds do come every day habitually to get water from there so this person is very happy hmm? but then uh, suppose there was no lockdown and this person goes on a vacation for 2 weeks during the summers what happens do all these birds die of thirst no they come for a few days don't find the water there they get disappointed but then they search for some other source of water they go and drink it from there and they survive or uh, say i'm speaking to all of you and i may feel i'm doing a great job telling you very useful things but then all it takes is a little clot that may travel up to a critical place in my heart or lungs or the brain and i collapse hmm? gone bahut bol liya uh will it uh, will you really lose anything significant no there will be many more who will continue better talks than this and you'll continue getting what i have been uh giving and uh, so the world goes on and uh, nobody is indispensable so this wider knowledge helps us in uh, realizing that we are nothing and what we are doing is essentially playing our role in the world and uh, the best way to play that role is by giving what we have to those who need it and that is what we call love the other possibility is that this wider knowledge of the deeper truths of existence makes me realize that uh, all of us are manifestations of the same divine and therefore basically we are all one we are all equally imperfect some may be slightly more imperfect than the others but that doesn't really matter some may be differently imperfect than me that also doesn't matter my knowledge is limited i know a bit about ayurveda but then nothing about homeopathy the other person knows something about homeopathy but nothing about ayurveda so we are all uh, we are both imperfect so you know it gives me a charitable way of looking at others and uh, the result is that i start feeling more and more one with 
everybody and when that feeling of oneness comes that exclusive attention to who is mine who is not mine what is my need and what is somebody else's need that exclusive attention starts disappearing vasudeva kutumbakam the world itself is a family that starts getting more and more real to me and what does that lead to that leads to leads to a sense of oneness and intimacy that translates again into love i give what i have to those who need it and who happen to be around me and in fact uh, there have been some studies on people who have lived to be 100 and above and one thing that unites all of them is that uh, they do not have a clear cut boundary between who is my own and who is somebody else and uh, because they love everybody anybody who happens to be around them becomes an object of their love these people are never short of those whom they can love and uh, since giving love is always in our own hands although getting it may not be these people are always able to give love and that is what keeps them going that's what keeps them alive and love is the result of that sense of oneness so ultimately it boils down to love which is the antidote to ego ego is a separative principle it divides us love is a uniting principle and uh, that is how love is the key to overcoming the ill effects of the ego today it has been basically a day of ego bashing but then uh, the ego has been planted in us with a purpose and uh, therefore uh, it does serve a purpose but then let it do what it can do and what it needs to do so long as we stop there the ego is not a problem uh about that some other day but uh, the what we have to overcome are the negative effects of the ego and the best way to do that is uh, to develop a greater sense of love and uh, that comes from this knowledge of the deeper truths of existence but that knowledge by itself will not be enough what we need to do is to try and live that knowledge when we translate that into action by giving by giving without uh, discriminating between those who are related to us by blood or marriage and others when we start uh, realizing that all conflicts at the mental level are essentially a result of partial knowledge and distorted knowledge when that happens and we start putting these principles into practice we find that uh, the more we put them into practice the more this knowledge becomes real to us and the more this knowledge becomes real to us the easier it becomes to translate it into practice so it's an ongoing process and every step that we take along this makes us feel happier gives us a greater peace of mind so in other words uh, the peace of mind comes not from uh, deciding that i will worry about nothing and uh, from tomorrow i have decided to be happy it does not come from sitting for 20 minutes a day in meditation no matter what technique we follow and then leaving the rest of the life completely unaffected and unaltered it comes from trying to live that knowledge in our everyday life and uh, the basic principle of living that knowledge is cultivating a greater sense of love for our fellow beings and we do that we find that we start moving towards the peace which uh, helps us also stay healthy because that is what we started with but then uh, we very often put the whole thing in a wrong uh, sequence uh, we say that well since i have to be healthy and for that i have to be peaceful so i'll be peaceful so that i can be healthy now that way it doesn't work forget yourself dissolve yourself in that uh, wider sea of uh, the creation of the divine and uh, just get lost in love for that creation love for the manifestations of uh, the supreme and uh, you find that uh, that love translates into peace peace becomes a by product and 
a bright product of that peace is good health. So it moves from love to peace and from peace to good health. And uh, without our focus on peace or good health, in fact, it works much better. Let us do what we have to do and the rest will be taken care of in the natural way, partly through our efforts and partly through, let's not forget, divine grace which is available to all of us. So what we need for the peace of mind is to get illumined by the light within, the light that our soul always has because that is what has total knowledge. And uh, it is not as simple as uh, saying that, well, my mind is in living in a darkness of ignorance. Soul has all the knowledge. So let me just uh, draw the curtain so that uh, now the light of the soul is available to the mind. It's a process. It's a gradual process. It's a long drawn process. But then uh, every step on that process makes the mind better equipped to live in keeping with the light of the soul. And uh, that is what keeps us healthy. I started with uh, a very common uh, mantra. And uh, in that, three of the lines, I will not go into the details today. Sarve bhavantu sukhina, sarve santu niramaya, ma kaschit dukkha bhag bhavet. They seem very similar. Let everybody be happy, let nobody have any disease, let nobody have even a trace of sorrow. But then how about the third line? Sarve bhadrani pasyantu. Now that is about uh, being aware of the most auspicious, seeing the most auspicious. And what is that? That is the divine. Which means being more and more aware of that highest reality, the infinite, the divine. And uh, when we are aware of it, we will also be able to organize our life around it. And if we do that, then the other three things in those three lines being happy, being free of disease and not having a trace of sorrow will be automatically taken care of. And that is why that third line is there because that in fact is the key line. If that happens, the rest will follow. So let's end with a prayer for that light which uh, will illumine the whole truth for us and that is what Sri Aurobindo's Gayatri is about. Om Tat Savitur Varam Rupam Jyoti parasya dhimahi yanna satyena deepayet. Om shanti shanti shanti.